And a second day of jury selection is underway in the federal hate crime against the man accused of carrying out the deadliest anti-Semitic attack in U.S. history. Robert Bowers is being charged with killing 11 people and wounding two others at the Tree of Life Synagogue in Pittsburgh. This is back in 2018. He appeared in court today. Bowers faces 63 counts, including murder, committing hate crimes, and several gun-related charges. Let's bring in CBS News legal contributor Jessica Levinson. Jessica is also a professor at Loyola Law School. Uh, so, Jessica, the suspect says he's ready to plead guilty in exchange for a life sentence, but federal prosecutors have said that they want to push for the death penalty instead. Uh, is this expected to have an impact on the trial? No, in the sense that that won't be admissible. The jury won't know that he was willing to plead guilty. And so the prosecutors will still have to prove that he was guilty. That's phase one. And then phase two will be convincing the jury that he should be punished by the death penalty, which is obviously the most serious punishment that we give in this country. And that's why jury selection in this case is going to take a while, because the prosecution really wants to have a group of jurors who are comfortable with and willing to give the death penalty in an appropriate situation. It always takes longer for jury selection when you potentially have a death eligible defendant as we do here. I was gonna say, Jessica, because that's a bit of a stretch for some people. There are many Americans who, no matter the circumstance, just don't believe in being responsible now for punishing someone else by death. Are there risks of prosecuting this man despite the fact that he was willing to plead guilty? There are always risks. So in this case, the evidence is really strong. There's body camera video footage, there's witness footage, there's telephone calls. The strength of the case when it comes to just that guilt phase is really going to be an incredibly high burden for the defense to have to, to try and undercut that. Having said that, any trial is a risk, but the prosecution was willing to go forward with that because they obviously really wanted this type of punishment. They did not want L LWAP, life without the possibility of parole. They wanted the death penalty here. They felt that because, as we talked about before, the worst anti-Semitic attack in the history of the country, they felt that that punishment was appropriate here. Well, Jessica, uh, what kind of defense should we expect given all of that? So I think that the defense when it comes to the guilt phase will probably be fairly light for lack of a better way of describing it in the sense that they don't want to undercut their credibility with the jury. Again, there's so much evidence here. It truly is overwhelming that he committed the crimes. I think that the defense will really hold their fire until the death penalty phase of the case. And then we're going to hear from the defense what we've already seen in the court filings, which is that he has serious mental health issues, that he has schizophrenia, that he has structural issues in his brain, that imaging has shown, and that it is simply not appropriate to give him the death penalty, that his life should be spared in this case. So I think a fairly quiet defense, I mean, they're not just gonna throw up their hands, but not a ton for them to do, frankly, on the guilt phase. I think they'll be much more active if there is a death penalty phase, we'll hear a lot more from them about mental health issues. All right, Jessica Levinson, thank you. Thanks, Jessica. Thank you.